Hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm Dr. Alex Hill and I'm a board certified women's health physical therapist. In this video, I'm going to guide you through four challenging core exercises to address your diastasis recti. If you're just getting started on healing your diastasis recti, go through by McGinner's routine first. It's linked above and in the description below. Otherwise, let's work on that core. Diastasis recti is a condition that occurs when the rectus abdominis muscles, commonly known as the six-pack muscles, separate along the midline of the abdomen. This creates a gap and it weakens the abdominal wall and can cause some issues with core stability. Although it's most common among pregnant people, it can happen with anyone, especially if you do a lot of heavy lifting or you've had very big weight changes. All you need for this exercise routine is a mat or towel to lie on the floor and a resistance band. If you don't have a resistance band, that's okay. You can still do these exercises. They're just not gonna be as challenging. We're going to do 10 of each exercise. And then at the end, you can return to the beginning and do the whole routine two to three more times for a full core workout. Before you start any new exercise routine, check with your medical provider first. The first exercise is resisted hip flexion while lying down. As we go through each of these exercises, make sure that you're engaging and contracting your deep core muscles, specifically the transverse abdominis. This muscle starts around the spine and comes all the way around to the front, acting like a corset and helping to stabilize and strengthen the core. As you do these exercises, check in, look down at your abdominals. You should see that they're always drawn in and they're not pooching out or tenting out. You should see no coning at the abdominals. Bring those abdominals in. First step, place the band around your feet and then you're going to lie flat on your back with your legs straight out in front of you. Keep your feet flexed so your toes are coming up towards your face. You can have your hands resting by your side on the floor, or you can have them on your abdominals so you can feel if you are starting to pooch or cone out. So you're going to breathe in, and then as you breathe out, you're going to draw in those lower abdominals as you lift your head a little and pull your knee towards your chest. Breathe in on the way down, and then exhale. Draw in the abdominals, lift the head, and bring the knee towards you. So each side, right and left, doing that counts as one repetition. We're gonna do that 10 times. So go ahead, get yourself set up, engage those lower abdominals, breathe out, lift and draw together. There's one, and back down. Breathe out, lift and engage. Good. Draw in, check that lower abdominals. Good. If bringing your head up is too challenging, that's okay. Just keep it flat on the ground and keep drawing in the lower abdominals. If drawing your head up and bringing your head up with each of these movements feels okay, then excellent, that's good. Research shows that doing a head lift as you engage the lower abdominals, that transverse abdominis, that helps to really reduce that gap of the diastasis recti. But again, if that's too challenging, then simply keep your head flat on the ground Draw in as you bring your knees up towards your chest. <sighs> Breathing is important with this. Make sure you exhale as you bring your knee up. Inhale on the way down. That helps to really engage the lower abdominal muscles. The second exercise is a resisted dead bug exercise. You're still going to place the band around your feet. You're gonna be on your back, but we're going to change the position so your knees and hips are at 90 degrees and a tabletop, and your arms are straight up. You're going to, just like before, draw in the lower abdominals and exhale as 
you do the movement. So you're extending opposite arm and leg. So breathe in, draw in the lower abdominals and extend out. Breathe in, engage, exhale as you extend out. Breathe in, engage, exhale as you extend out. Really try to keep your back neutral and against the ground. Don't let it draw up into an arched position. You want to keep it flat. You also want to make sure, again, that you're checking your lower abdominals. Make sure that they're not pooching out, they're being drawn in. Exhale as you extend. Breathe in. Exhale as you extend. This should feel more challenging than just a regular dead bug with no resistance. If this is too challenging, you're not able to keep those lower abdominals drawn in, go ahead and drop the band and continue doing it without any resistance. The third exercise is a banded bridge. We're gonna move the band from the feet and we're gonna bring it all the way up above the knees to your thighs. With this exercise, you'll be on your back. Just like everything before, we're drawing in those lower abdominals with the resistance band. If the easier resistance band feels too easy for you with these exercises, then go ahead and increase and go to the next stronger resistance. So you're gonna have your knees and feet just a little bit wider than your hips. You're going to breathe in, and then as you breathe out, you're going to pull in the lower abdominals and lift your hips off the floor. Hold that for several seconds, and then come back down. As you do this exercise, if you come up and you're arching too much, that can cause some back discomfort. So make sure that you keep your back neutral the whole time if you have back problems. You can also shift your feet into different positions if you need to, whatever feels most comfortable for you. The band should feel like it's trying to bring your knees in together. You want to keep them out at at least hip width. So go ahead and get yourself set up, hands by your sides, or you can have one on your stomach to make sure that you're drawing in. You're going to breathe in. Draw in, breathe out, and lift. Breathe in. Contract the lower abdominals. Breathe out and lift. Breathe in. Engage. Breathe out and lift. Breathe in. Engage. Breathe out. Lift. Excellent job. Again, if you start to feel that this is too easy with this lighter resistance band, go ahead and go to the next resistance band up. You want this to feel challenging, like your outer hips and your glutes are really having to work to keep your legs out to the side instead of being brought in. I like this exercise because you get a lot of bang for your buck. You're working on the abdominal muscles, your back muscles, your glutes, your hamstrings, and you're also working on your pelvic floor muscles. So if you've got pelvic floor issues, especially postpartum, this is a really great exercise for you to do. Good, breathe out, draw in those lower abdominals, check your belly, go ahead and look, make sure it's not pushing out, you want it being brought in. All right, you made it. The last exercise is a modified side plank with a clamshell. So for this last exercise, you're going to lie on your side with your knees bent 
the band still around your thighs and you're going to prop yourself up on your bottom forearm. Make sure the forearm is underneath the shoulder. You don't want it way out or way underneath. Try to get it directly under the shoulder. Now you're going to engage those lower abdominal muscles like we've already been doing. And then you're going to lift your hips off the ground, open the top knee, knee down, and then hips down. So it's a two part movement where you push yourself up, lift the knee and then close the knee and then drop down. So let's go ahead and do 10 of those. So you're going to draw in, exhale as you lift, exhale as you lift the knee and then come back down. If you can do both of those movements at the same time, you're more than welcome to do that too. So that would be a lift and open at the same time. Sometimes that can be a little challenging to coordinate. But if you can, that is totally fine to do. Otherwise, you can do it in that sequence movement of lift and then knees open, knees down, hips down. So whatever feels most comfortable for you and makes the most sense for you works out. Breathe in, breathe out, and lift. Good job. This should be feeling pretty challenging. You should be feeling it in the arm, in that upper back in your core, in your glutes, your back. We're really getting a lot of muscles with this exercise, pulling in the whole time. Now we can't do one side without doing the other side. So go ahead and switch sides. We're gonna do 10 more on this opposite side. Same exact movement. So make sure that elbow is right underneath the shoulder. You have your knees bent, feet together. Make sure your abdominals are drawn in. Go ahead, breathe in. Breathe out as you exhale. Breathe in. Breathe out as you engage your lower abdominals and lift up and open. Good. Your abdominals are probably starting to feel a little fatigued now. That's okay. Make sure you keep good form. If you start to feel yourself wobbling around or you're not engaging your core, just slow it down, reset, and keep going. Exhale as you lift and open. Draw in those lower abdominals. You should feel them engaging that whole movement, not pooching out. Great job, you just finished the first round of exercises. Again, we did 10 repetitions of four exercises. So if you want that full exercise routine, go back to the beginning with those resisted hip flexion exercises on your back and repeat this whole routine two to three more times for a full routine. As you work out, remember consistency is key to when you work on strengthening the muscles and also with working on reducing and strengthening that diastasis recti. Be patient with your progress and always listen to your body. Thank you for watching. I hope that you found these exercises helpful in regaining core strength and working on reducing your diastasis recti. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more postpartum exercises and pelvic floor tips.